I will show you how to trim electron microscopy resin blocks using glass knives like this one here. You can trim blocks using razor blades and many people do that. But if you use a glass knife, you will get a much more precise and controlled trim, which then you can go on to sectioning and the sectioning is likely to be much faster and easier. Um, the, the other time, the time when you really want to use a glass knife for trimming is when you want to get serial sections. For serial sectioning, trimming using a glass knife is far superior because it helps you a lot to, to get ribbons of sections that sort of stick together. Trimming uh, blocks with a glass knife can look a bit tricky to start with, but it's actually quite simple and it can be quite fast once you get the hang of positioning a block and once you understand what you are trying to achieve when you position your block in a certain way in the micro time. You can trim with a glass knife using pretty much any microtome. I'm just going to use this one because this is the microtome that as a regular user, um, you are more likely to use here in the Center for Bioimaging. Depending on the type of block uh, that your sample's in, you might have to trim the block a little bit using a coping saw before you do the trimming with a glass knife. Uh, there is a separate video showing, showing you how to do the trimming with this saw here in this room. So if your sample was embedded, for example, at the bottom of an Eppendorf tube, then you might want to trim the sides here with the saw so that this, um, this block fits better in the chuck for sectioning. Now, if your sample was embedded using an embedding mold, in which case you get a block a little bit like this, you might get some excess resin around the sample, like here, for example. You might want to remove this excess resin using the coping saw before you start trimming with a glass knife or a razor blade. By far, the best way to embed your sample uh, in a way that you won't need to trim it with a coping saw before trimming with a glass knife is by using beam capsules. Beam capsules give you a block that's got this shape and the tip of the block is basically just sample. So you don't need to trim with a coping saw at all before starting to trim with a glass knife or a razor blade. So in this video I'm going to show you how to trim using a glass knife a sample that has been embedded in a beam capsule. The microtime might make a beeping noise when you switch it on. This is to do with the positioning of this wheel here. So if you turn this wheel so that this black handle is down, you should be able to stop that beeping noise. To use the microtome for trimming, and in fact even for sectioning, you don't actually need to switch on the computer attached to the microtome. All you need to do for trimming is to switch on the lights here in these two buttons. So if you click here and then click that, then you should see the lights coming on. These two pieces here are armrests that you can use for trimming by hand with a uh, razor blade. You can put these armrests down when you're trimming with a glass knife. Above the microtone here, you will find a box with lots of small bits that you might need to use when you're sectioning and trimming. The chucks or sample supports used for trimming and sectioning should all be in this box in here. You also have some other bits that you might need for sectioning and trimming. When you're trimming with a glass knife, it's very important that the support that you use has four clearly defined marks like these ones here, these lines, yeah. 
There should be four of these lines at 90 degrees to each other. Yeah, another one. And then there's another one here and here. Yeah. As long as you can see these lines clearly going all the way from here to here, then that support can be used well for trimming with a glass knife. Ideally, you should trim your sample just before you section it with a diamond knife. You shouldn't trim your sample one day and take it out of the support and then put it back in and then section. Because when you trim your sample, you're going to trim it in the same position that you will use for sectioning with a diamond knife. And if you take your sample out of the support, it will lose that positioning. One thing, of course, that you should never do is keep your sample in this support after you have finished using the microtone so that you can keep the sample in the same position for another day. Yeah? We haven't got many chucks in the unit. So if you keep a chuck for yourself stocked in a drawer, then you are obviously taking it away from another user. Place your sample block inside the chuck support and then secure it in place using an allen key. It might have to be a different allen key depending on the supports. They don't all take the same size allen key. Make sure the block is not wobbling so it should be nice and nice and secure. There really isn't one defined orientation um, that you should use for the block inside the chuck because it really depends on whether your sample has, has an orientation or not, whether you have to worry about this orientation or not. If it's just a pellet of cells, for example, at the tip of a resin block like this one that came from a beam capsule, what I tend to do is I tend to place each side of this square in the center facing one of these lines here. At this point, fix the chuck on the microtime arm, which is this piece here. To do that, it might be easier if you have this piece here, which is the knife support, out of the way. You can take the knife support out of the way by unscrewing this wheel here and then carefully sliding this back and then placing it on the side. Then slide this part of the chuck here into this hole here. You will then fix the chuck onto the microtime arm by using this screw here. Yeah. Tighten it nicely. It may be that this screw won't be visible. So if, for example, if it's like this, you can't see it, then go to this wheel here, turn it until you see the hole. Now, if you look on the right hand side here of the microtime arm, this line here of this metal piece should be aligned with the zero degrees. If it is not, then on the left hand side here, you can turn this wheel and align it to zero. Now you're going to bring the knife support back in. These lights here will be facing your block like this. Slide it back into position here. Making sure that this end here does not hit your block. So it's safely away from your block. And then fix it in position using this wheel here. If you use glass knives uh, regularly for sectioning, it's likely that you have your own stock of knives that you've made. If you are new to sectioning, 
um, please ask me how to make glass knives so that you can have your own stock. But in the meantime, we do have a communal stock of glass knives that you can use while you're still while you still don't have your own knives. These communal knives are stored here in this blue box above the the trimming station. Always hold the knife from here, never from this edge here. A good glass knife will have one and only one sharp edge, and this is this edge here. Ideally, this edge should be as straight as possible. Take a glass knife and then place it in the knife support with the blade facing your block, but away from it. Then press the knife towards the front and the side and then fix it in position. It is important that this side of the knife is flat with this metal part of the holder and then that this side of the knife here is also flat with this metal part of the holder. That's why you have to press it in position and then tighten it. If your sample is not positioned centrally in the, uh, in the chuck, you might need to have your knife a little bit higher in the knife holder. To, to make your knife a little bit higher, you use this thing here, which we call a booster seat. So you place it in here, and then, and then you put your glass knife in. In this video, I don't need to use a booster seat because the sample is actually right in the center of the chuck, but you might need to use a booster seat. The booster seat should be here, right next to the microtome. Or sometimes a user will have used the booster seat here on the power time screen, so you'll be able to find the booster seat in this other microtome. Use this wheel here to move the knife sideways and align it with the block face. You can see here that the knife is at some distance from the block face. To move your knife holder a little bit closer to the block, the first thing you need to do is to actually move the block up a bit using this wheel here. So turn this wheel until the block moves up. Then turn this screw to loosen the knife holder and allow it to be moved forwards and backwards. Look at the block and the knife side on so that you can move the knife holder forwards while moving the block up and down to see how close the knife is getting to the block face. This should be close enough. Then secure the knife holder again. You should check that this wheel here is set for what we call a clearance angle of six degrees. You can see here that it's set for six degrees. This is the same clearance angle as that of the diamond knife. So you should keep the clearance angle the same. To make sure that the angle of this part of the holder is set for zero. Yeah? So this zero is aligned with this zero here. If these two are not aligned, then you use this wheel to correct the alignment. 
from now on, you will be looking at your block and the knife through the eyepieces of the microtone here. You will have to position the viewing area on the block and the knife using these different controls here. And also, there is a magnification wheel here. So now observe how I'm going to move these different views and how it will affect the position of the eyepieces, yeah? So this is moving backwards and forwards. This is turning forwards. The eyepiece can also be moved sideways like this. This here is actually the focus view. So it will move this whole structure up and down to focus. And this here changes the magnification. So you can move the eyepieces in different directions to be able to see your block and the knife quite precisely. So use these different positioning wheels that I've shown you um, to position the eyepieces and to set a magnification in a way that you can see your knife edge sharply in focus. It doesn't matter whether you'll be able to see your block in focus. It's important that the knife edge itself is in focus. If you turn this wheel here, you should see your block going up and down without touching the knife edge. So now what you need to do, and you're going to need to do this throughout this process, is to use these two wheels here to move the knife closer to your block. Now I'm going to use the course approach to move the knife closer to the block. As you make the knife get close to the block, keep turning this wheel here up and down so that the block is moving up and down relative to the knife and at some point you will see the knife sectioning the block. When you use the microtome to trim with a glass knife, you can either move the arm of the microtome like this, repeating this movement here, or you can actually turn this wheel. This is in fact the movement that the microtome would do automatically when you ask it to cut. As the knife gets close to the block, you will start to see a shadow of the knife on the block face. Now the knife got quite close to the block and it actually took a section of the block face. At this point, you start using the fine approach. Now you are taking slices of the block face with your glass knife. To remove debris from the knife edge, you can either use a brush that you find in the box of tools above the microtome, or you can use one of these compressed air canisters. Always brush away from the knife edge never towards the knife edge. If your sample was well osmicated, so if the sample had osmium in it, you will start to see that as you section the block face, there will be some dark spots or dark areas on the block face. These are the areas where you have sample. It's important to cut into the block enough that you're confident that you are cutting into the sample and not just cutting on resin. I can see now that I am getting a darker area in the middle of my sections. 
So I can see I'm cutting into this pellet of cells now. Now that I'm confident that I'm cutting into the sample, I can identify a large area of sample on the block face. I'm going to stop trimming the block face and then trim the sides into a trapezoid shape, which is the ideal shape for sectioning. At this point, you want to move this wheel so that your knife moves away from the block face. So I made some simple illustrations to try to help you understand what you're going to be doing with your block face when you trim with a glass knife. So if you imagine that this is the tip of your block and that the brown stuff in the middle is your sample, basically what we want to do is try to define a trapezoid shape that contains your sample. So your block face will look like a trapezoid um, of about 500 by 500 microns. So if we then imagine that the knife itself is at the top of our image there, then the first thing we need to do is define one side, the top of this trapezoid, and then we are going to turn our block upside down, so we're going to turn our block 180 degrees, so now we're going to use the knife to cut And now the next step is we have to define one of the sides of the trapezoid. So again, we are going to turn our block, this time about 90 degrees to the position we were before, but it's not quite 90 degrees. It's got to be a little bit off 90 degrees because this is a trapezoid and not a, a rectangle or a square. And now the knife again will cut one side of the trapezoid structure. And then what we do is we turn this block again and then cut the final side of the trapezoid. So in the end, if you remove this imaginary trapezoid that we placed before, and then turn our block to see it in the original position, and then this is more or less what you will see on the micro time. But of course, on the micro time, you will have some light shining on your block face. So this is more or less what you will see uh, when you look at your block face after you've defined the trapezoid structure um, using the glass knife. You want your sample to fill most of the area of this trapezoid structure. So you really need to look at your block face and think about how the bit of sample that you have appearing on your block face will fit in this trapezoid and where is best for you to put each of the sides of the trapezoid. Sometimes you won't have a very clear picture of where to place this trapezoid until you start sectioning the sides of the block. And then when you start sectioning the sides of the block, you will start seeing the sample appear and then you will have a better idea of what to do. Move the block up a bit so to, that it is safely away from the knife edge. Now you will move this part of the knife holder here with your hands so that this zero here is aligned with the 25 or 30 on this side here. So after you put the knife at an angle relative to your block face, reposition the chuck so that one of these lines here, yeah, is aligned with this line on the microtome arm. And you will align them using this wheel. There you go, they're aligned. Now you need to bring the knife close to the block again. So you will again use the knife approach wheels, these ones here, that move the knife towards the block and you might also need to use this wheel here to move the knife sideways. Initially, 
you will be able to see the knife approaching the sample with the naked eye and see that the knife is far away from the sample. As the knife gets close to the block, you will of course have to look through the eyepieces as you approach and then at some point you will see that the knife will section the side of the block. You should be able to see as the sections come out whether you have sample on the whole side or not. Trim well enough into the block so that you have a side that is large enough so that when you start taking your thin sections, your ultra thin sections, you will be able to take a good number of ultra thin sections of your block. Now move the knife back again because you will again be repositioning your block face. Now you're going to turn the chuck again so that this little line here is aligned not with this line but with a similar line that is on the opposite side of the chuck so down here yeah so you are now going to align this little line with a line that is 180 degrees to this one so this is 90 degrees this is now 180 degrees. So we have this line, it continues on to here, yeah, and then it's aligned with that one, okay? Now you should be able to use just the eyepieces to see how the knife's approaching the block. So I'm moving again the knife closer to the block with the approach wheels, and at some point my knife We'll start sectioning this block. So it started sectioning now. Now move the knife back again. Turn the chuck again relative to the knife so that instead of this line being aligned with this line here, you're going to have one of the two lines that is at sorry, 90 degrees to it. You can't see it terribly well on this chuck, but the line is actually here. I hope you can see it. In fact, to create the trapezoid shape, I don't want this line here aligned to that one. I want this line at an angle relative to that one. So I'm going to have this line to the right of this one first. So about one or two lines to the right. Get the knife close to the block again. And start sectioning again. You can see that now I'm sectioning mostly on resin. So you need to start sectioning well enough into the sample that the side of the trapezoid is into sample. You can see that it is now. Now with the block face in focus, hopefully you will start to visualize the shape that I'm trying to achieve. So again, I'm going to move the knife back a bit and then turn this wheel here to reach the line that is at 180 degrees from this line. Okay. So I'm going to move my block 180 degrees. Now the thing is, I want to make the side of this trapezoid. So these two lines cannot be aligned. This line needs to be to the left of that one slightly. About this much. Now let's do the knife approach. And 
I have got the final side of my trapezoid that I can section. Hopefully, as I turn this around, you will see that on my block face, I've got this nice trapezoid shape and this is the ideal shape for ultra thin sectioning. Although you can section with other shapes, this is the ideal shape. This particular block face is probably a little bit on the small side. I'm going to put the ruler next to it. It's a little bit on the small side. It can be a bit bigger than this. You don't want it to be as big as one millimeter, probably. The knife edge is usually three millimeters wide, the edge of the diamond knife, and you don't want it to be too big on the edge of the knife. So this is actually an okay size. So now you've trimmed your block face and you're ready to start ultra thin sectioning with your diamond knife. But before you do that, don't forget to move the glass knife away from the block and also return this piece here of the, uh, the knife holder back to zero. Make sure the clearance angle is also at six degrees. When you've finished using a glass knife, don't forget to dispose of your knife on the sharps bin that stays here on the bench.